offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is through the fruit of your lips that acknowledge his name. Hebrews 13, 15. Let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge your name, his name. Psalms 116, verse 12. It says, what shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits to me? That's why I started running because First Lady, she, she got an insight. She got an email about the scripture. But it's awesome because I, she knows I don't tell her. We don't tell each other, hey, what you preaching on? You have to wait till Sunday like everybody else. But it's awesome because when, then when God makes that connection like that, Right? God is just confirming some words. And that's what you want. Yeah. You don't want to tell everybody what you're preaching about a minister. You want God to confirm it. Right. You know it's authentic. God told you to do that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give us those verses again. Yes, ma'am. Hebrews 13, 15. And like always, I will send a PowerPoint to you. Okay. Hebrews 13, 15, and Psalms 1, 16, verse 12. So here's the thing. The question is, why should we praise him? We've already gone over this. Do I praise and worship? We'll go over it one more time. Why should we praise him? In my PowerPoint, you'll find out that I put a picture of I and a heart downgrade. There are people that love downgrading or declassing Jesus. The people of today are trying to declass Jesus. They don't want God to be in a class by himself. So they love downgrading the gospel. The people of today especially in the U.S. and the majority of the world, they are downgrading the gospel. We would call that watered-down gospel. Mm -hmm. They love to downgrade. So their praise has been downgraded to entertainment. Their worship has been downgraded to the status of being enlightened. When we downgrade God, we limit his move in our life, and we put him in the same class as dead God. When we downgrade God, we cannot put God in a class with Baal. We cannot put God in a class with liberty. We can't put God in a class with Zeus or none of these other Greek gods and goddesses. We can't do that. When we do that, we have just declassed or decommissioned him. We have declassed him. Put him now. They talk about classified. When it's classified, you can't read unless you have clearance. Mm -hmm. But when you declass God, you put him in the same environment as others. Can I tell you something? Just a little nugget that just dropped into me. There are things about God that are classified, and only those that are believers can actually obtain this access and this Amen. knowledge of God. Amen. He said. He tells it in the scripture. Those that worship him must worship him in what? Fear Spirit and truth, which means you have to have the spirit and the truth about God to get access to access classified information about God. We, we try to get sinners to talk about stuff that is not that they don't have access to talk about. We go search the world and they try to break down the Godhead or the knowledge of God. But that's really classified information because you won't get that unless you have the spirit and truth. It's just not enough to have the spirit, but you have to have the truth about God. Amen. You have to know that God is one. Uh -huh. God is not three. You have to have the truth about God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God, it, we know that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Right. Yes. You have to have the truth about Jesus. He is manifested in the flesh. Uh -huh. God does not communicate with another spirit or another being in his body. He is infinite in power and in wisdom. Yes. Listen, when we try to make God three 
They say that they're separate. We've already declassed him. And now we have limited his power. Watch this. When you have a God, I don't even know why here, but when you have a Godhead and you're talking about the Trinity, the Trinity, we'll put it like this. I love props. This is God in the middle. You say the Holy Spirit is here. You say Jesus is here. So who communicates to who at what given time? Who is over who? That's how we've classified the gospel or put the gospel as God now has to communicate with the spirit. But when you read the rest of the Bible, the spirit leaves in the New Testament and it's just God and Jesus. So what happened to the third leg? That is misguidedness. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. God does not talk to Jesus. What do you want to do today? I don't know. What do you want to do today? He doesn't talk like that. Uh -huh. He doesn't talk to the spirit. Spirit, do you want to dwell in the people today? I don't know. What do you want to do? No. Everything comes from him. Can I take it a little further? Yes. The spirit of God is holy. Uh -huh. So why would he make another holy spirit right, 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 if God is a spirit? Right, right. That's right. Come on. If God is a spirit, he's already holy. So I don't need another holy spirit. Amen. I don't need another holy spirit to dwell in me. I need the spirit. Yes. Amen. Can, I take it, can I take it further? The Bible says that when you're baptized, you should receive the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. We know that ghost is something that has been alive in flesh and now has died, but the ghost is still there. So we're taking on the image of Jesus, but there's, they're not three. They're only one. Amen? Amen. So in order to, class, to access classified information of Jesus, you have to know that, he's, that all of this is one. one. If it's not one, then you can't even access classified information of Jesus because you believe that he's three. So you believe that God cannot even communicate with himself and he has to create other beings to talk to in order to do his thing. So that means you put God in a box and you say that God is limited even to his, even to Jesus and the Holy Ghost. But he's a spirit. So how can you have a Holy Ghost if he's spirit? How can, he, how can you have a separate one? You can't. He came and dwelt down in flesh while he was still controlling the heavens and gave a seed to Mary, named him Jesus, but he was still communicating. And when we see Jesus walking, we see Jesus walking in his human side because he was half human, half spirit. Mm -hmm. And he was telling us how to walk, how to talk, how to communicate with the Father. Amen. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost yourself, you will say that they have to be co-equal. There is no such thing as a co-equal, co-nothing in the things of the Lord. No such thing that is from the enemy. There is not a nothing that you can't co-nothing. That's why my wife is not a co-pastor. That is demonic. That is of the enemy. There is no such thing as a co. We don't coexist together. We are one. Amen. 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 That's good right there. Amen. We are one. Me and my wife are one. That's right. Amen. We're one. Yes. That's why she tells me she thought about it before I thought about it, even though I thought about it first. Yeah. But we're one. All right. That's, right. that's a good, that's a good, that's a good thing. Yes, it is. We become one flesh. Yeah. So she's like, I knew what you was thinking. I know you. She get on me. I know you, babe. Okay, I know you too, right? But we're one. That's what a relationship we become one. God wants us to become one. So we know God when He says, Man, you better know. Okay, God, I know what you're saying. We become one. We're not a co. We're a team, but we're one flesh. When you become married, you become what? One flesh. When you become married with God, you become one flesh. You become one organism. You become one unit. And it's like having, having this section sing soprano. We want all of this section to be in one voice. Many voices, but just sound like one. Yes. That takes time, that takes skills. 
So to access classified information of Jesus, he is not going to reveal himself if you think he's three. He won't. He'll give you a little bit. He'll give you a little bit. He'll give you some stuff. Or watch this. You will have to work twice as harder to get the same information if you would just believe that he's one. Hmm. Three times as hard. <laughs> three times as hard. Because you believe that there's three. It's interesting. We, me and my wife went to, and I'm not talking bad about this person, um, but we went to uh, South Sacramento one time and they had uh, Fred Price come. And Fred Price was talking, and he was just, he was talking about some revelations. The whole church was, oh, ha, wow. Remember? Man, that's deep. And me and Janine, like, we've been knew this. Right. But when you believe that God is three, like he said, you got to work three times as hard to get the same thing. You are over it. Exhausting yourself. You have to have, you can't even flow. You can't flow in the spirit because you don't have the spirit. That's why you see some that they have to preach and they have to have everything written out, detail to detail oriented because they're not able to flow. And they have to have some kind of order because they don't know how to flow in God's order. So in order to get classified information of Jesus, number one, you have to have the spirit. Number two, you have to be able to flow within the spirit. So you have to know the truth about the spirit. He is one flesh, not three. Amen, amen. That's right. He is not a monster. He is God. That's right. Hallelujah. I think that is important that we classify. I mean, we, we get that under our mind. So that when we go further in the things of God, we know that he is one flesh, one organism. Mm -hmm. He is not limited. When you put him in three categories, you limit him. But that's what the world of today has done. It is hard to even find information that will accept God as one. There's even some books that I read that I have to, man, that ain't right. And I know that ain't right. So, the Bible, the Bible lets us know by the actions of God that God is in a class all by himself. Amen. God is the creator of mankind. He is unclassified in scriptures. Amen. He is grace. He is uncomprehensible. He is infinite. He is just. He is, uh, I said grace, he is unchangeable. He is the protector. He is powerful. He is the all-knowing and all-seeing. He is the spirit of truth. And he is still alive. Yes, 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 yes. That is the number one thing that you need to realize That God is still alive When you do things Against God and you bring God To the level of all of these other gods What you're, under, what you're saying is, is That now Jesus has become dead Because you want to class, declass him Down to these other status of other gods That's what the children of Israel did They brought God down To the same level as Baal And all of them but those gods are dead. Elijah proved it. Yeah. Let's challenge you to a duel. Mm -hmm. Let's see whose God is great. Mm -hmm. Right? We talked about that, right? We found out. Elijah laughed at him. Your God is dead. Mm -hmm. So God is saying that he needs to remain in a class by himself. That's right. Amen. If you declass God, you limit God. If you think God is Three different people, you are limiting him and put him in the same class as other gods. Look at that. Look at that. Nimrod has his own little three godhead. He tried to make him a little three godhead. All of these, they all got these little godheads that they try to make. They trying to be like God, but can't be like God. Why try to be like God when you have the spirit of God on the inside and you can just be one flesh, one organism, be one with him? So this is why we are supposed to praise. And in this, in, the, in, in this text, Hebrews 13 and 15, it says that through him, right, let us continually, we'll get to that, offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. And we know through the fruit of our lips. So the first thing that we must understand, the sacrifice of praise. This praise does not mean a shout. It really means worship. It is to offering, it's offering words of homage as an act of worship. 
So this praise is actually a worship praise. It is not a praise of, ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. It is a worship praise. Yeah. Mm. Right, so he says to offer a sacrifice. And, and a sacrifice is an offering that is made to God. And, there's, and, and here it says, the God of Israel. Now I want you to understand this. That this, the sacrifice of praise comes from a gift, which means something acquired or given without compensation in return. Mm -hmm. Then it comes to contribution. A voluntary gift made to some worthwhile cause. Then the sacrifice is an offer made to God. So watch this. When you begin to give God the sacrifice, you start, it's, it's, it's a gift. You're giving something without compensation in return. And it is a voluntary thing that you do when you sacrifice yourself to God. Amen. When we worship God, we always want something in return. Is it a sacrifice then? No. no. It cannot be. He says, offer a sacrifice. You are doing this without thinking of compensation. You are doing this because you love him, not because you want a bitly. You are doing this because you love God. Man. It is a voluntary thing that you're doing. Nobody should have to push you to sacrifice yourself to God. You should want to do it voluntarily because you love him. That's right, man. So he says, let us continually offer up a voluntary gift without compensation to him, which comes through the fruit of our lips. Amen. You and I are to do this as a gift to God. God voluntarily died for you. Amen. That's right. And we spent a lifetime trying to repay him back. He didn't say, I want you to do this because I'm doing this. He died for the people that are still going to hell. He died for everybody to give them an opportunity. Yeah. Yes. This is a voluntary gift that you give to God. I, I just can't get off of that. Amen. It's voluntary. You're not wanting anything in return. But on the flip side, he'll bless you anyhow. But you don't come with the mentality, I'm going to praise God because he's going to bless me. Uh -huh. You need to praise God for a blessing. You want a blessing, you better jump up and shout and praise him. That's not voluntary. That's being ordered to. That's right. Amen. You voluntary. The words that are being preached move you to voluntary express uh -huh. that you want to worship God. Yeah. Not be saying, you better do it. You better jump and shout. If you don't run and shout, you're not going to get blessed. No, that's not voluntary. You're making me do it because you have an ego problem. And if your ego is not validated, you feel like God is not using you. Amen. But God says this is a voluntary sacrifice. And he I, that's why some praise is not honored. Because you're making me praise. Come on. Oh my that's right. Don't make me. Let me want to. That's right. That's right. Now there's a difference now. We say we encourage you. Mm -hmm. You know what? You need you should praise because when you praise, God is gonna help you. He's gonna He's gonna do some things. Right, because the Bible says, give God praise for the spirit of heaviness. There are times when you need to praise God because you're heavy. Yeah. But I'm not going to make you and feel like if you don't praise God, you're going to hell. Because if I don't, if I do that, I'm no better than the next person. You need to be in a position to be able to praise him or express him however you're going to express him voluntarily and know that I'm not getting anything. Which I'm not coming in here to pull something out. I'm doing this because I need to do it. Because I want to do it. Because I love him. Amen. I praise him because I want to. Amen. And they would talk about me. Ain't that right, Sister Warner? <laughs> I just messed with her. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> but I did it. But it was voluntarily. Now, I had no idea it was voluntary. I just love to praise him. Amen. That's me. But you got to have the understanding that this is something that you're doing because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You owe this to God. Mm -hmm. You owe this to God. Mm -hmm. So then continually means to seemingly do this without interruption. You're doing this without being interrupted. Mm -hmm. When you're offering your sacrifice, 
You can't go like this. Okay, let me start that over. I gotta take this phone call. No, you do this. You do this. Continually, you don't interrupt the sacrifice that you're rendering to God. Because then if you stop, blow the fire out, and go do something else, then you're saying, God, you're not number one in my life. Because I don't even have enough time to sacrifice my own body to praise you. Continually means to do this without interruption. We have to do this on a, on a, a, a constant basis. It's not a one-time thing. And then when we do it, you can't worry about what's going on. you got to be locked in. Uh -huh. Because it's your life, your body, that's being purified. Uh -huh. You ever cook some food and you think it looks dumb but it ain't dumb because you weren't in the fire long enough? Then you cut it open and it's messed up? That's how we are when we don't let the fire burn out. It's just like when you're trying to get, if you, some people cook with alcohol and what they do is they set it on fire and they make sure everything is burned out, it's purified. You've got to let God's fire consume that. When they would lay their altar, when they would lay their, 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 their best on the altar and God would consume with fire, they didn't run and say, wait a minute, hold on, I want that meat. They left it there. Amen. Amen. Leave, it Leave it there. So then it says, the fruit of your lips. Now watch this. This means the outcome is the consequence of some effort or action. When we're going to sacrifice, he's saying that our fruit of the lips, our mouth is going to be the outcome of how we sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now this comes as the consequence or the result. So it stems from the result. And then, it, and then it goes down to being the outcome, right? The outcome of an event, especially as relative to an individual. You are taking the time as an individual to say, the sacrifice I'm going to give him is going to come throughout my mouth. I'm doing this through the fruit of my lips. I'm doing this. See, these things are related together. You're doing this as an offering without anything in return. You're doing this without anything in return. This is why God calls us to Romans 12 and 1. I appeal to you therefore by the mercy of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. sacrifice. There goes sacrifice again. Without anything in return. That's why you owe God your praise. You are doing this. As, look, God does not want dead sacrifices. Give him your best. Be a living sacrifice. The reality is most folk won't even worship or praise God. And the, the, the reality is they'll worship him or praise him in lieu of just receiving something back from God. That's the reality. Most people are only going to worship God because they want something back from God. That's not a healthy relationship. That's a bad habit, especially in the, the, the African-American church that we have. It's a bad habit. We got to change that. 21 days, change it. We got to get out of that habit, right? right? We don't praise God so that we can receive something back. When praise is going, blessing is going to come down. So I'm going to praise him because I'm giving me a blessing. Right. No, you need to offer this because you want to, because you love him. That's right, and he knows. The reality, and that's right, he knows. He knows when you're doing this for real or you're just doing this for a show. You was at home trying your new shout. You move your legs to the side and then I'm going to test this out. You know you know how you did back in the day trying to get your good dance move. I'm going I'm to I'm do it. When I go to the dance floor, I'm going to do it. You know, you know I'm telling the truth. You saw something. Oh! Somebody was jumping. I'm going to try to crisscross this to Jesus today. <laughs> but you know people do this they do this they practice in the mirror it's on YouTube they got the, they know how to different shouts and everything y'all have seen the videos but it's sad it's sad it's a sad thing it's a sad thing it's really a sad thing <laughs> 
It's all right. You're all right. I laugh too. But that's the reality. The reality is, is most people will never really achieve praising God as something that I want to do. They do it because they're trying to show something. And then if they want to be seen, they're going to run to the front line. They're going to run to the altar. <laughs> typewriter. They're going to do the typewriter. They're going to do the chicken typewriter. It's the truth. It's the truth. And then what happens? What happens is you, you look like, you see, see how the same friends I be having? I'm like, man, I used to probably do that. <laughs> I didn't realize I was I didn't know what I was doing. Right. You know, and the truth is, you see everybody doing it, so you must think it's right. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's be let's be truthful about it, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the reality. If more people understand the true purpose of sacrificing yourself to God, our services will just be off the hook, <laughs> right? Come on now. Thank you. Our services will be off the hook. Right? We would go to a convention. We probably wouldn't even have the, the pastor preach. We'd just be slain in the spirit. Just, oh, Lord, you just... I mean, because we were doing this to offer this to God. Or more people would be more susceptible to actually hear the preached word. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality. No praise equals no freedom. No worship equals no relationship. You're not going to praise God. You're not going to be free. If you're not going to worship God, you're not going to, your, your relationship with God is not going to grow. Here's another, here's another reality. No praise plus no worship equals to lead a, to, that leads to a life of surviving, not thriving. And it leads to really no relationship with Jesus. Plus, no identity of Jesus leads you in a position or a perfect candidate to not inherit the kingdom of God. No praise plus worship, no praise plus no worship equals you to be a perfect candidate not to inherit the kingdom of God. That's what that leaves you, a perfect candidate. You have to remember what Ezekiel told, what God told Ezekiel. They are going to know that I am the Lord. Right? God says every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. Lord. You're going to know that he is Lord. You owe him your best. This is the time to connect with Jesus and not pray, play around. When you play around, you put yourself as a candidate to maybe not be blessed or maybe not make it into Jesus, in the kingdom of God. It's the truth. I'm not trying to put myself as a perfect candidate not to inherit the things of God. Amen, that's right. So that means I have to change. I have to change something. Which leads us to Psalms 116. What shall I render? What can I give to God? What can I say to God? How can I bless him? You see, when I pick up Psalms 116, when you really read it, it's broken down in a couple of sections. The first verse is really Yahweh or Jesus hearing my voice. Verse two, it really leads to then I called on him. Again, I'm using my mouth. I called on him. Mm -hmm. Verse three really titles is really death was trying to compose of me. It was trying to get the best of me. But verse four says, then I called on the name of the Lord. Verse four and five tells us that I called on the name of the Lord. And then verse 6 says, he saved me. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you titles of the little texts, okay? Mm -hmm. When you read it, you see the handout, you'll see what I'm saying. So it says that he heard my voice. I called on him. Death was trying to take me out. Mm -hmm. But then I called on him again, and then he saved me. Yes, yes. Then he dealt with my issues wonderfully. And he saved me from death. Notice, this started with me opening my mouth. Yes. Again, these are titles against the text. The scripture says, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and pleased 
and my plea for mercy. Verse 2 says, because he inclined his ears to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Amen. Verse 3 says, the snare of death encompassed me. The pains of sorrow laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. It's then I called on the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous our God is merciful. Amen. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Verse 8, it says, you saved me. It says, for you, are, you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. It started with him opening his mouth. He had some issues and he was able to work it out. Through the fruit of his lips. He worked it out through the fruit of his lips. You can tell him that how he struggled, but then how he encouraged himself. This is an average person. You start praying, you're struggling. But somewhere along the way, you start to encourage yourself. Amen. Because 100% of you is present. That's why you can't be typing on the computer and trying to pray. You can't be talking on the phone, trying to pray to somebody, trying to have two or three things coming around. Because you're only giving God 50%. You can't, get, you can't go to heaven on 50%. He needs 100% of you to be present while you're talking to him. Amen. 100% of you needs to be there. Not half of you. You'll get a part-time maybe blessing, but a part-time maybe blessing won't get you into a full-time kingdom of living. My goodness. So then verse 9 says, I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. He let me live. And I believed even when I spoke and I was and it says, I'm greatly afflicted. Afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind is liars. But then he says, what then shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? To, to me, excuse me. Verse 13 says, I will lift up the cup of salvation. I'm going to lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. So, it says, I'm going to lift up a cup of salvation. Then it says, then I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. He is telling you what he is going to do when he realizes that everybody is a liar out here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the vow that I vowed to the Lord. I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. Again, he says, I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. 15 says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Oh, Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. The son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. You have saved me from the bond of death. Amen. You saved me from the hands of the enemy. You saved me. Yes. I like verse 17. I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Verse 18 and 19 says, I will pay my vows to the Lord and the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. I like 17. He says, I'm going to offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I'm going to do this I don't care if I get anything back. That's not the intent. The intent is to now honor because I had some issues when I was praying and you gave me the mentality to work it out. So now I'm going to give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you the sacrifice that is needed. I'm going to be a living sacrifice. I'm going to lay out and say, God, purge me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Purge everything on the inside of me. Then he says, I'm not going to be ashamed about it. I'm going to praise him in the presence of everybody. Hallelujah. 
You can't be a silent praiser. You can't just praise at home. You got to be able to do this wherever you go. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. There goes continually. Continually without interruptions. There it goes again. There it goes sacrifice. Giving myself to the Lord. Make you think now, right? Yes. I got to continually do this. Uh -huh. I can't check my email while I'm praising God. No. No. I can't go live when I'm praising God. Mm -hmm. Really? I can't do that, Lord? Why not? I can't do a selfie when I'm praising the Lord? Watch me. Ooh, look at that footwork. <laughs> I can't do that. Why not? Because I'm giving God just a little bit of me. Right. Uh -huh. The main reason, I'm giving God a little bit of me. And then, am I pleasing God or am I wanting to be seen? Come on. Do I have expectation? Do I want to be seen? Right. Come on. That's good right there. Do I want to be seen? See, listen, when you praise God, you are exalting him to a level above you. When you give God praise, you are putting him in a place that he deserves to be higher Amen. than you. You are lifting him up. You are exalting him to the next level. You've got to praise him and lift him up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to lift him up to the next level. So listen, last point. I mean, last thing and I'm done. We have to have the mentality that we have to come in here and give God a sacrifice of praise. Man, I'm going to praise you because I just love you. That reminded of a song, Jesus, I love you because you cared. I wouldn't imagine if you weren't there. I'm going to praise you no matter what. I'm going to give you the best praise. I'm not going to have a limited praise, but I'm going to have, oh man, I'm, I'm going to have a praise. I'm going to have a crazy praise. I'm going to have a crazy worship. I'm telling you. Saints, you owe God your praise. You owe God your life. So in closing, what shall you render to the Lord? What are you going to give to the Lord? Render means what? what? She's already talked about what render, giving. What are you going to give to him? Are you going to give yourself as a sacrifice? Are you going to sell out to God and give God everything that you have? Or from now on, are you going to be 100% when it comes to the things of the Lord? You got to be 100% present. Mm -hmm. No, it's like you saying 100% present. Because we can be here but not present. That's right. I'm going to be talking to you, but I'm really not present. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do after church. Right. I can be singing but not present because I'm thinking about eating because my stomach's growling. You see what I'm saying? Your body's here, but your mind is not present. If your mind is not present, you might as well not be here because you ain't getting nothing. But he's saying that when you're praying, you need to be present. A hundred percent, all of you needs to be there. And what am I going to give? I'm going to give God the sacrifice of praise through the fruit of my lips. I'm going to be a living sacrifice. Right? This is my reasonable. This is the least I can do. The least I can do is give my body as a sacrifice. Just like in the old time when they would lay that thing down and fire would consume that. Stretch out to God and let God just consume you. Right? It's not somebody setting you on fire. He is setting you on fire. Amen. Remember this. In order to, and I like how this is said. In order to really access that classified information of the Lord, you got to be with him. You can't let the world try to commentate who Jesus is and they don't have a spirit. You got the spirit and truth. Right. You just can't be filled and don't have the truth. If you're filled and don't have the truth, you still have some, uh, some areas you need to groom in. Mm -hmm. Don't say that God won't talk to you. But as elders say, you got to work three times as hard to get the same thing if you were to just line yourself up yeah. with the truth. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God, we lift you up. You. Oh, we bless your name. Yes. 
Guess what? My headache went away. Told you. You're not going to let him. That enemy stop me. Hallelujah. 